When we want to find the vertical asymptotes of a rational expression, we don't want to make this mistake. The most common mistake that students will make is say, oh, a 3 in the numerator and denominator, let's just go ahead and divide it out. So that is not correct. The answer is not 1 over x minus 6, okay? So don't do that. Now, your idea of applying the division property is correct. That's what we want to be able to look for. However, there's a couple things that we need to understand about the division property. The division property only works when we have terms that are separated by multiplication. And I get it, sometimes it's confusing because the three is being multiplied by the x. But let's go and take a look at this in another way so we can kind of really understand why this minus six is messing it up. Okay, so the division property states whenever you have something over itself, right, an expression, a number, then it's gonna to equal to one. But again, this only works here if three times four divided by three, you can see how the threes will divide out that's equal to four. And again, you can do the math in your head, right? Three times four is 12, 12 divided by three is equal to four. However, if you have subtraction, the division property does no longer work, right? Three minus four is a negative one. Negative one over three is not equal to negative four. So we have to be careful. We cannot go ahead and just divide out the threes. What we can do though is apply factoring. So what actually what I'd want to do in this case is I want it to go in and factor out the three so therefore I can identify my vertical asymptote because another mistake that students will make is they just see the minus six and they say, oh, the vertical asymptote is at x equals six, but they forget there's this three in front of here and this three actually messes everything up. So what we're gonna do is first thing you wanna do is factor out this three. Always look to factoring when you are simplifying rational expressions. That's why a lot of students hate rational expressions because there's so much factoring that is involved. Now what I want you to see is we have a number times this expression. Yes, there's a subtraction inside these parentheses, but that subtraction is not messing up the product between these two quantities, right? So we have a quantity multiplied by another quantity. Now we can apply the division property and we get one over a x minus two. Now, mistakes still will happen. Students will say that the vertical asymptote is at x equals a negative two because they see x equals a negative two, but that is not correct. Don't do that, okay? What we wanna do is we're trying to identify the vertical asymptotes or holes or discontinuities or whatever may be the case. We're thinking to ourselves, what number makes my denominator equal to zero when I were to plug it in? And if you think about this, if you plug in a negative two, negative two minus two, right? You owe me $2, you borrow two more, then you now owe me $4. That does not equal to zero. So what number makes my denominator equal to zero? Well, you might be able to do this in your head, or you could also just think about set it equal to zero. We wanna know when is my denominator equal to zero. So I just take my denominator, set it equal to zero, add a two to both sides, and x is equal to two. Therefore, the vertical asymptotes of this equation is going to be x is equal to a two. It's not a three. A lot of times students will say, oh, these threes divided out, so therefore that's an asymptote. No, 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 it's not a discontinuity, right? Remember, for it to be an asymptote, it has to be a discontinuity, meaning that value makes the denominator equal to zero. Three does not make my denominator equal to zero. The only vertical asymptote, which is a non-removable discontinuity, is going to be at x equals two.